Off the Cuff is supported by Patreon. Subscribe today and get exclusive early access to all episodes, plus fun off-the-cuff merchandise. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm really excited about this week's menu because it's the exact reason I created Off the Cuff. In a nutshell, a couple years back, I weighed nearly 400 pounds, and I was diagnosed as a type 2 diabetic. Yeah. And the first thing I missed was all the delicious comfort foods I could no longer eat because it wasn't compatible with my diabetes. Well, since then, as you know, I take comfort foods that we all know and love, and I make them lower carb even keto friendly and equally as delicious. And that's what I'm doing today. Today, our entree is actually a keto low carb version of chicken Florentine. Mm. Oh, it's decadent, it's luscious, it's delicious. It's a fresh chicken breast, stuffed, it's lightly breaded, lightly pan seared and then baked to utter perfection. Oh yeah, and trust me, I am not a trained chef. If I can do this, you can definitely do this. As a matter of fact, I guarantee your family is going to think that you've been doing it for hours in the kitchen. Good. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Come on, let's do it. I can't wait. What a terrific entree. It's going to be low carb, keto friendly, kind of fancy. Oh, ho, ho. chicken and cheese and spinach go so well. With Whoa, 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 whoa! Is, is that an earthquake? Oh, that's my neighbor, Bluto. What do I hear you say about spinach? Uh, yeah, uh, was my door locked? Yeah, it was. My doorknob. Yeah, just go ahead and build a new door around that. Slap a little paint on it, you'll be good to go. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So what I hear you say about spinach? Oh, I'm making chicken and it's going to be stuffed with cheese and it's going to be stuffed uh, with... Ah, don't say it. No. Chicken stuffed with cheese and... Mm hmm. You know how I feel about that leafy green vegetable. It's a weed. It's just a green vegetable. Uh, wait. Is this for your cooking show? Yeah, we're on right now. Oh. Hi, folks. You know, you really have to unclench about this spinach business. Hey! Look. You know how much trouble that spinach has caused me with that little runt Popeye? Yeah, but it makes you crazy. You broke in here the other day and you threw my dinner off the balcony. Uh, you were making Popeye! I was making pot pie, not Popeye. Well, still, throwing it off the porch was very cathartic. Yeah, you know what? I think this is all about olive oil. Ugh. Come on. No, not anymore. What? No more olive? Craig, she's just such a fickle woman. I mean, it's always like, I love Popeye. I love Pluto. I love Popeye. I love Pluto. I love Brutus. I love Popeye. You are Brutus. Why does everybody ever say that? Because you are? No! Look, back when Popeye and I were fighting a lot, we were going to do a lot of stunts and getting beat up a lot, I went to the studio and I asked for a little bit of a pay raise. Well, rather than giving me the extra money, they just went and hired my twin brother, Brutus. Your brother did that to you? Yeah! Can you believe that? At two, Brutus. At two. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. What are you doing? I'm just counting until the groans stop from the audience. Look, you have plenty of friends. Hey, what about Wimpy? Wimpy? That guy owes me four thousand dollars for hamburgers. He did say he'd pay me next Tuesday, though, so. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, uh, you'll find out. Look, about friends. I happen to know that a certain one-eyed sailor who watches every single episode of my show. How about this? You miss him, I'm sure he misses you. How about throw out an olive branch and talk to him directly? He's right out there. Come on, maybe you can rekindle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Popeye. It's me, Bluto. What do you say, me and uh, you uh, bury the old hatchet? Yeah, you can go, uh, Meet up at the park and, uh, you know, beat the tar out of each other like old times. What do you say? Hey, I'll even go over there right now so I can meet you. What do you say, chump? 
I mean, jum. <laughs> See, Pluto, that was really, really nice. That was nice. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Popeye's on his way over to that park right now. You think so? Oh, yeah. I should probably get going and go see him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yes. He's until he breaks out that spinach. <sighs> I've been thinking about that. It's been 80 years. Why not even the odds? Hey, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. Oh, that little run Popeye is not going to know what hit him. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, thanks, Craig. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, just uh, shut the door. Never mind. Here are the ingredients. Now for the ingredients for our keto chicken Florentine. First off, the chicken and the filling. Two skinless chicken breasts. Six ounces softened cream cheese. Two cups chopped raw spinach. One third of a cup grated Parmesan cheese. One half cup grated mozzarella cheese. One quarter teaspoon each of black pepper and kosher salt. And one eighth of a teaspoon nutmeg. For the breading, one third cup extra fine almond flour. One third cup grated Parmesan cheese. Two eggs. One half teaspoon each of dried parsley and kosher salt. One eighth teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. We're going to start off with our chicken. Now, if you've been stressed, if you have some anger or frustration you want to get out, you're really going to love this part of this recipe. We're gonna pound our chicken. Now, a lot of people tell you to take the chicken and place it between two separate pieces of plastic wrap. You most certainly can do that, but I take a storage bag. Just as easy, it locks up, so you don't get like chicken shards spraying all over your kitchen. Okay, we're ready to pound our chicken. Now, there's two sides to each chicken breast. You wanna do the smooth side up. Place it right here. Here is my mallet. This is for tenderizing. We don't want that. This is the side we want. And our goal here is to make this about, well, to make it thinner, obviously, and about twice the size. Oh yeah, all that aggression, everything <laughs> coming out. My downstairs neighbor doesn't like this too much. Now, whenever I do it, I just tell them I'm remodeling. You don't have to do it too hard. Just let the weight of the mallet do the work for you. And as you can see, the chicken has been flattened and has increased in size. Let's do the other one. Let's pretend this is my boss. Yeah, thanks for the raise, boss. Thanks for marking me late. Thank you so much for everything. <laughs> you gotta be careful. If you get too into it, you end up decimating the chicken. Okay, getting the thick pieces done. All right, and this chicken is done. All right, now we need two cups of chopped raw spinach. How do you figure that out? Well, fairly easy. You take a cup and put the spinach in until you have about a cup. I'm gonna do a heaping cup, I think. Like that. There's one cup. Oh, by the way, when you're chopping, keep your knuckles down like this or else you could have uh, finger food. Don't need that. Okay, there's one cup. Remember, keep those knuckles flush with the side of the knife. Uh, this recipe called for raw, and I like fresh stuff anyway, so I'm just going fresh because I can. And there we go, our two cups of chopped raw spinach. Okay, for the, for the Parmesan cheese, we're gonna use this side of the grater. Yes, we're doing this for the greater good. Get it? The greater. Okay, I'll stop. We gotta do this for a third of a cup. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go to the bigger side here.
That's working much better. All right. Yep, again, can you use the pre-packaged grated Parmesan? Yes, you can. I choose not to. I want to make it fresh and delicious. Oh yeah, we got a lot here now. I bet you we're at a third of a cup. Yes, we are, one third of a cup. And now to top off our cheese, we need one half cup of shredded mozzarella. Oh yeah, we're gonna have enough. Here we go, just a little bit more. And our cheese will be done. Oh, I can't wait. This is gonna be so absolutely delicious. I think I have a half cup already, or I'm gonna be dangerously close. Let's see. Yep, one half cup. All right, so aside from the chicken breast, what we've been doing here is preparing our filling for the chicken. We have the grated cheese, we have the raw spinach, and now we have the cream cheese. The recipe calls for six ounces softened. So let's soften it, shall we, in the microwave. This doesn't take long. 30 to 40 seconds is all you need. Our cream cheese has been softened. Now we're gonna mix all our elements together, plus some more spices. We're gonna stuff the chicken, roll it, put it in the refrigerator to cool for about 15 minutes. Then we're gonna concentrate on our breading. Come on. All right, now let's start with our elements. This is the mozzarella cheese. <laughs> it still has moisture, so it sticks to the bowl. It's like a magic trick. Ta da! Right. The grated Parmesan cheese. And well, that goes right in. Here is the nutmeg, the black pepper, and the salt all combined together. Yeah, okay. Once that gets going, in comes the spinach. Just stir it. Make sure that everything is just well, well, well mixed together. Make sure that all the leaves are, all the leaves are, just <laughs> make sure all the leaves. Oh yeah, this is, this stuffing is looking good. And that's it. There is our filling. Now let's get our chicken breasts. I just sprayed our baking pan with nonstick cooking spray. That's always a good one. And now we have laid out our chicken breast, our well flattened chicken breast. Okay, with the rough side up, and now we're gonna put the filling in. And now we're going to wrap it like this. Fold it over, stuff it in, kind of like that. You make it into a nice oval. And you're gonna place it like that in the pan. And then we're going to repeat. If you overfill it, it goes everywhere. I, I know because I tried with that other one before. I may have done it again. We'll see. This may be too much filling. Actually, no, this is wrong. Uh, nope. Okay. It's not too much. Let's fold this in here. All righty then. And put it in the pan. Now we have our two chicken breasts ready to go in the refrigerator. The chicken's in the refrigerator. Now it's time for food facts. The history of spinach harkens back to ancient Persia, now known as Iran. And it wasn't called spinach back then. It was called... Uh, it was called a Sputnik. It was called... A a a a spash, a speech, a spanic. Um, I'm just gonna call it spinach. By the sixth century, spinach was already on the move. It was introduced to China when it was presented to them as a gift from the king of Nepal. Oh boy, a present from the king of Nepal. A box of sandy green leaves. Thanks. Then in the 16th century, 
Spinach really kicked into high gear when, like all great foods, it made its way to Italy, where Catherine de Medici, there she is, she looks so prim and proper. She's actually famous for being the Medici family from the Renaissance. Oh yeah, you're nobody if you don't know Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Anyway, she loved spinach. She loved spinach so much that when she decided to leave Florence to marry the King of France, she had all her cooks and chefs come with her so they could continue to prepare spinach exactly the way she wanted. And so it was done. And since that time, whenever spinach is used as a bed for food, it's called a la Florentine. Yeah. As a matter of fact, last night, I think I slept a la Florentine. <laughs> That's not my bed. <laughs> spinach began being wide produced and cultivated in the United States in the late 1800s, and it was popular pretty much from the get-go. But something happened in 1929 that really set it apart. No, not the Depression. Thimble Theater. Yeah. Thimble Theater introduced a character called Popeye. <laughs> yeah, who, I mean, who doesn't love Popeye? To show you how big spinach got, okay, in 1933, they did a poll of the top three children's favorite foods. Number one, ice cream. Well, yeah. Number two, turkey. Oh, I love turkey. Number three, spinach. Whew. That's some pretty heavy company. Of course, spinach and Popeye's popularity went on for decades. And people knew that if you had spinach, you could do some amazing things. I mean, it became part of American culture. I mean, even one of my favorite old time shows, Gilligan's Island. Yeah, Gilligan found radioactive seeds. Spinach could lift a skipper up with one arm. That's some serious power. But unfortunately, it's all false. Yep. And that's because of a German chemist by the name of Erich von Wolff. You have to go back to 1870. He was just doing some innocent calculations on the amount of iron in green leafy vegetables, including spinach. When it came to spinach, Mr. Von Wolff made a mistake with a decimal. Instead of 3.5 milligrams of iron per 100 grams of spinach, he wrote down 35 milligrams of iron per 100 grams of spinach. That's 10 times more. Yeah, that was kind of a big mistake there, sir. Oh, by the way, that's not Eric Von Wolf. That's actually Fritz Haber. He won the Nobel Prize for compounding ammonia. His picture is just uh, filling in. Thank you very much, Mr. Haber. If spinach had that much iron, that means every time you ate 100 grams of spinach, you would be consuming enough iron to make a paper clip. Yeah, you can see how that's probably not true. The United States is the third largest spinach producer in the world, yet they only produce 3% of the world's spinach. I know, mind blowing, right? 3%. Who's first? China, yep. They produce a whopping 85%. That's a lot of spinach. Now, to really wrap that up, if you have fresh spinach in your refrigerator, odds are it came from somewhere in the United States, if you live in the United States. Now, if you have a bag of frozen spinach in your freezer, odds are that didn't come from anywhere close by. Yep, it may have come from China, but it came from somewhere other than the United States. A little humbling, huh? That little bag of spinach that's in your refrigerator, might be more traveled than you are. And that's food fact. Okay, so this recipe calls for very fine almond flour. This is blanched almond flour. It's not very fine. And here goes the almond flour. All right. So now our almond flour is fine. I mean, it was always fine. Now it's fine. Now our breading. In goes the Parmesan, the kosher salt. There's no rhyme or reason. The dried parsley. This is the garlic powder. I may have used a little extra of that. And the onion powder. We're going to need a bigger bowl for this, I think. All right, simply put, we take our chicken 
And I'm doing this with my hands so they don't fall apart. Put that in the egg and roll it in our mixture here. Oh, that looks good. Into this pan for safekeeping. Readjust the bowl and do the same with this piece. Into the egg. I know. I'm going to be washing my hands a lot after this. And into our breading mixture. Well, we're using every bit of that. That looks good. And back into here. And there we go. Now we're going to pan sear these. We're preheating our pan and we take two tablespoons of oil. I chose to use avocado oil. You can use whichever oil you like. They, uh, olive oil and avocado oil tend to work pretty much the same. Um, it's, I guess it's all about the taste and I happen to enjoy both too. So bottom side down first. We're not going to do this too long. We just want to brown each side. I would say about 30 to 40 seconds per side. I want to I want to make sure it stays together. That's how you want it. Brown, just like that. Oh yeah, it's browning very nicely now. Now, while I'm doing this, I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Okay. These are about ready to go. That goes in that pan. And this one's a little darker, but that's okay. Okay. I made a boo-boo before. We're preheating the oven to 375 degrees, not 350, for 18 to 22 minutes. This is really thick chicken. It might take longer, so I have to keep an eye on it. Okay, into the oven. We shall see you in 18 to 22 minutes. Sort of. Okay, so I was late setting the oven to 375, so I've got the chicken stay in there an extra five minutes. Let's see if it's ready. Oh, baby. It's ready. And here we are. Keto Chicken Florentine. Oh, my. I mean... I have never cooked this before, I swear. But I've seen pictures and I have to say, this is all cut up now, but this looks exactly like the pictures. It's really not that hard to do. It may look a little bit more complicated than, and admittedly, I used the fresh Parmesan, the fresh mozzarella, the fresh spinach, you know, um, and certainly you can. But you know, if you're feeding a family, you're in a rush, you can use uh, pre-grated uh, cheese and, and spinach, and I'm sure it would still come out exactly the same. Calorie-wise, it's not terrible. Carb-wise, it's fantastic. It's guilt-free. Uh, this is the kind of meal where you don't even have to season it if you did your job right when you were cooking it. Um, one chicken breast, this is one chicken breast. It's a huge portion. Um, for me, yeah, I, I could I could definitely gobble that down. I can't wait to taste it. Here I go. I have a piece all ready to go. It looks fantastic. Oh. The chicken is tender and juicy. The crust is salty. It's firm. Um, the cheese and the spinach filling explodes with flavor. You get the Parmesan, you get the mozzarella, you get the garlic. This is, <laughs> this might be the first time on camera where I eat the whole meal before the camera stops. This is truly magnificent. And it's like I said earlier, it's kind of fancy. It really is. Mm. I give this my highest recommendation and as far as me personally i'll be making this for myself two three i don't know 17 times a month 
I cannot wait. Try this. You are going to love it. Well, thank you for watching. Please catch me next time. Until then, be well, eat good. <laughs> I'm eating fantastic. <laughs>